let's start with the first one. In the diagram below is quadrilateral ABCD with AB equal to 3, uh, B equal to, and then we said there was a mistake, then that's C equal to 120, and it wasn't BC equal to 5, it was A, uh, yeah, it is BC equal to 5 centimeters. All right, calculate the length of AB. Now, if we work in this bottom triangle, yeah. I have an angle and two sides, but the angle is included. So you need to know which rule you can use with what information you have. Because it's included, I can use the cosine rule. If it was excluded, I would use the sine rule. You must know those things. Né? Okay, so the cosine rule, what I would do, I'd put in my small letters. Look at this diagram. The small letters will be, here's the small c, here's the small a, here's the small b. Okay. The side I want to calculate is c. So I start with c squared equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. I substitute a with 5, b with 3, 5, 3, and then cos 120. Then I get 40, c squared equal to 49. And then I take the square root of 49, that gives me 7. And that's the length of ab then. Do you all understand? Any questions? Right, the next one is calculate the size of angle D, round it off to one decimal place. So now I want to find this angle here. I've got this side, it's seven centimeters. So in this triangle, I've got two sides and the an angle, but the angle now is not included. Therefore, not the cosine rule, but the sine rule. Okay. So I use the sine rule, I put in my small letters. Now this is a small letter D, this side. This uh, side is small letter A and this side is small letter B. So I've got A and A in a full set, side and angle. I have the D side and I want the D angle. So therefore I don't even need these two B values. They're not necessary. I'm calculating an angle, so I put the... Um, the sin D at the top. It's not a necessity, but it does simplify the calculations. So sin D over D is equal to sin A over A. Do the substitution, then I take the 7 over, it's going to multiply here. Looks like that. And then I take the sin over, it becomes shift sin. And then you just type that in your calculator and you get an answer of 60 degrees. Okay, before I show you the answers of 1.2.1 and to 1.2.3, I just want to show you here on the diagram. So the first question says, they give you all of this information and then they ask you to find the length of AC. So it will be this side. AC in terms of Z. Let me use a highlighter. Z and K and D. So now do you see of which triangle Z, K and D is part of? It's part of the triangle ABC. Now this triangle ABC is not a right angle triangle. Okay. Do you see that? Right. Because it's not a right angle triangle, I cannot do normal sin, cos and tan in it. I can only use the sine and the cosine rule. Now, what I have here is two angles and a side. What can I use, which rule can I use for two angles and a side? Is the sine rule. So, I just swapped the two questions, don't worry about that. So I use the sign rule there. I put in my small letters. I've got capital letter B. So this is small letter B. This is the side I want. 
I've got capital letter C, I've got side C. I've got capital letter A, I've got side A. So what I have is the full combination is C and C. You see that? I want B's side and I have B's angle. So I'm not looking into A and A. It's not necessary for me. So I say B sin B is equal to C sin C. Do you understand why I did everything there? Okay. Then I substitute the values. AC is the length of B. K is the angle of B. D is the length of the side C. And Z is the angle C. And then I just get AC alone. D sin K over sin Z. Do you understand? Okay. The next one. I'm just going to erase what the notes that I've made so far. I have to find AC in terms of Y and H. Can you see that Y and H are now not part of that triangle again? The side I want is still AC. But do you notice that AC with Y and H are now part of the triangle ADC? And ABC is a right angled triangle. There it is indicated. And when I have a right angled triangle, I can use normal sin, cos, and tan. Okay? So the angle I have is this one. The side I want is adjacent to the angle. Do you understand that? The side I have is opposite from the angle. So the things I have information about is the opposite side. The one I want is the adjacent side. The one that works for that is tan. So therefore, I can say that the tan of y is opposite over adjacent. Is that difficult? No? The tan of Y is CD over AC. CD is H. And I get the AC alone. It's that one where you can just swap the denominator with the answer. Then I have AC in terms of H and Y. Now the last question says, hence, show that H is equal to that. Now whenever we come across a word, hence, it means use what you've done so far. Use what you've done so far. So what you had to, or what you got at 1.2.1 uh, is you got AC equal to that. And at the second one you got AC equal to that. So the only thing I can do with the two answers I've got so far is to let them be equal to each other. And once I have them equal to each other, I can just get H alone because the, in the answer of the question, they want H alone. So I just took the tan Y over. That's why it only counted one mark. It's nothing big. Can we move on? Okay. Right, the next question. Determine the general solution of cos x over 2 equal to sin x. Okay. So the general solution here, what I wanted you to see is that the angles are not the same. 
You cannot multiply this angle with 2 and multiply that angle with 2. This is not an angle alone. This is cos x over 2 and sin x. So if x, for example, is 60 degrees, then this is actually the cos of 30 equal to the sin of 60. There's nothing you can do to change that sin to cos by multiplying with oh, that 30 to 60 by multiplying with 2. Do you understand that? Okay. But how would you change the sin of 30 equal to the cos of 60? How can you get them to be the same somehow? Is with co-functions. When you use co-functions, the cos can change into a sin, and the sin can change into a cos. Do you hear me? Okay. If the angles were the same, yes, then you can divide with cos, and this one can be disappear, and this one can become tan. But if the angles are not the same, you need to get the functions the same. Do you remember we did that sum? Huh? Yeah, in class. With a number of you guys, and then you showed each other after class, and then we did it in class again. Okay. So what we do is, we say that the cos of x over 2 equal to the sin of x. We want to add a 90 minus to the angle. Because when we put, doesn't matter where you put it, if you put a 90 minus there, that cos is sin. If I put a 90 minus there, that sin is cos. Okay, so it looks like this. I now just chose the right hand side because I chose the least complicated angle. So I say, I put in the 90 minus, but then also the function changes. So you don't just put in the 90 and then in the next step change it to cos. It changes to cos because you put in the 90. So the 90 minus must stay there. Now that the functions are the same, you can throw them away. Then it's a normal solve for x. Now what I told you guys is, when you get your x alone and it has a coefficient, you have to write plus k times the period before you divide with that coefficient. Because dividing with that coefficient will not only influence the constant value, it's also going to influence the period of the graph. Remember, when the angle has a coefficient, that is the value b. Ne? And b influences the period. So once you have that, now you can divide with 3 over 2. Then 90 becomes 60 and the 360 becomes 240. This is not the general or the, you know, the, this is now sounding funny, but the normal general solution that we did in, geo, ach, in trigonometry. Do you agree with me? Okay, the others you must also know how to do. That's where we have the same angles, but our functions are not the same. Or we have a quadratic equation, and we have to factorize. Then we get the function and the answer, shift, function, get the angle size, and then go and look in which quadrants are they, and you write the answer for each quadrant. Do you remember that one? You need to learn that for the exams. You may know how to do this as well, but what I'm saying is don't forget that one. Those are the actual general solution sums. The? The three. A minus x, when it goes over it, plus. So a half plus one is one and a half, and one and a half is three over two. Right, next, 2.2 .2 is the graphs. There's a big graph question in the exam. You must go and practice them. Right, when we look at this, they gave you the equations and they gave you the graphs. That makes it very, very, very easy. 
because there's nothing unknown. Normally, we have unknowns in the equation or we don't have the graph. We must be more prepared for that in the test. Okay, but this one, everything was given. It was very easy. They said write down the period of G of X. Now, G of X is this cost graph. Now, you need to understand that when I have X over 2, that's the same as, um, let me just write it here, X over 2 is the same as a half X. Do you know that? Okay. That means the B value is a half. How do you get the period with the B value? You take the standard period, divide by B. Things that you must learn. When you say 360 divide by a half, that's the same as multiplying by 2. Therefore, the period is 720. Two point two if H of X is translated thirty degrees horizontally to the right to form the new graph, what will the new equation be? So this is the P value. P is the funny one. If it moves to the right, it's actually minus. So it's just X minus thirty inside of brackets. Please see to it that you put it in brackets. I think for most of you I put it in brackets that didn't put it in brackets. If the equation of G changes to G of X equal to cos 2X over 2 plus 1, explain in full how the graph of G will change. So, this thing is not in its simplest form. Do you agree with that? This is actually cos X plus 1. So, the graph, the first graph G, had a period or had a B value of a half. Therefore, its period was 720. This one now has a B value of 1. So, how will this graph's period be different from G? G was 720. This one will be the standard period. It will be 360. The first G did not have a plus anything. What does the plus 1 do? Translates it up 1 unit. Okay. So the period is 360 and the graph is translated up one unit. The marks in the test is much more for graphs. Okay, question three. Statistics. I'm just going to put it here on the board and I will show the answers. Determine the range of marks for class A. Range is the biggest value, the maximum value minus the minimum value. So it's 100 minus 10 and the answer is 90. Determine whether there are, whether there are any outliers in class B. Show all calculations. Now, in order to be able to calculate or to find out if there are outliers, you need to know the formula, which is something that you learn to be able to calculate outlier intervals. So the formula is Q1 minus 3 over 2 times IQR. The top value is Q3 plus 3 over 2 times IQR. If you don't know this, you can't do this. And you have to learn this. What? Yeah. Any question you can start with. Alright. So, first we need to find the IQR. What is the IQR? Interquartile range. That is Q3 minus Q1. Now you just read that from the graph. Q3, first you have to determine what am I counting. So 0 to 10, 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay, so every line represents 2. 
So therefore, if this one is here, Q3 is 94. You understand? Q1, 30. So the IQR is 94 minus 30, 64. Then you say Q1 minus 3 over 2 IQR, Q3 plus 3 over 2 IQR. So it's 30 minus 3 over 2 times 64, 94 plus 3 over 2 times 64, and that is now your interval. So are there any outliers? No, no outliers. Because the smallest value that you can get for this test is zero, and the highest value you can get is 100%. Is this hard? Huh? No, ma'am. Okay, 3.3, that was the only one that might have been a higher level question. Give the interval of marks for the, nine, for the top nine learners of class B. Now, they said here that each class has 36 learners. Ne? It was given in the information. So nine learners, they are the top nine. What is nine out of 36? Nine learners out of 36. What's that in its simplest form? One over four. So do you see they are actually referring to the values greater than the upper quarter? Do you hear me? If there are 36 learners and we are looking at the nine best performing learners, those are all the learners that scored above quartile three. If I change this question, I ask, give the interval of marks for the, the weakest nine learners of class B. That would be the lower nine. So the lower nine is between the minimum and Q1. Then there are nine learners between Q1 and Q2. Then there are nine learners between Q2 and Q3. Then there are nine learners between Q3 and the maximum. Do you get that? Okay. So the top nine perform between 94 and 100. 4, I gave you the values and I asked you to determine the median of the data. Now, you cannot calculate the median if the data has not been arranged from smallest to biggest. So I arranged it and then if you wanted to use the position, you would say there are 10 values, 10 plus 1 is 11, divide by 2 is 5,5. When there are so few values in the data set, it's fine if you just cancel, 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 and then you see you end up with those two. Okay. You don't have to use the position. But that just gives you the position. You need to remember that. That's not the median. So if it's between 19 and 23, you're going to say 19 plus 23 divided by 2, and that gives you an answer of 21. Do you all understand? Calculate the interquartile range. So that's not the median, that's not the median. The median is 21. So I don't use it for the higher or upper 
upper set of data. So the lower set of data is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 values. So instead of getting a position, just like you can see the middle value there, it's 16. Don't waste time. And there's the upper set of data, 27, Q3. So the IQR, 27 minus 16, 11. Do you understand? If 19 was the median, you remember, then it would be out for the set of data going further. The lower set would then be from 12 to 17 and the upper set would be from 23 to 30. Okay. Next question. The average weekly absence of the learners. Now, I just typed it on my calculator. I put it in my calculator because I saw that the next question is standard deviation. So I'm going to have to put those values into my calculator in any case. If you got it wrong, I just want you to use your calculator and test. Maybe you just made a mistake there, typing or entering the values. And then the standard deviation is 9,2. Ah, 6,2, sorry. Now, you had to discuss how the data is skewed. So, we say that if the mean is on the right of the median, it's skewed to the right. If the mean is on the left of the median, it's skewed to the left. But if the median and the mean are the same values, then it's normal. And you had the value of the median and you had the value of the mean. Therefore, it's normal. Do you all understand? Okay. I don't think there's anyone who got 5.1 wrong. Can I just give the answers? Now you know how to find the cumulative frequency. Determine, uh, no, draw a give to represent. Okay. There's my O give. Grade 11s, if you draw it in this small space, you are going to make mistakes reading from the graph. The grid is big enough for you to use. You don't, the, the smallest one you're going to plot there is 90. Do you see? That's the first one you're going to plot is 90. So don't go and put in values. Some learners said 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. 100, 110, 120, 130. So they've used, they have this whole space, but their graph is in this small space. You, I told you guys, you can jump the first one. Just the first one. Okay. If we're going to look at the salaries that people are earning in, or the salaries of doctors, do you think they're going to give a graph from zero up to 10,000 rand for a doctor? Why would there be an open space where there's no information? They earn big money. So they're going to start by the minimum that a doctor earns. Do you understand that? So you make that first jump. And then you go on. Then there were some of you drawing uh, frequency polygons. There were some of you drawing histograms. There were some of you, I don't even know what it was that you were drawing. Yo, guys, that's what I said. I don't know if you are doing homework, if that's the thing that you're drawing. I can understand that you have an effort drawing a I'll give, but maybe you used the lower uh, values at the intervals or you just made a wrong reading or what, what, what. I can accept that. But not knowing what the I'll give is. Then you look me in the eye and you tell me you did your homework. I don't think I'm wrong. You had to at least somewhere draw a give. Otherwise, I understand that you get it wrong. Okay, so there I drew it. You use the second value and the cumulative frequency. So it's 90 and 4. 
and then it's 95 and what was that value? 7, no, 10. Then 116. Then 105 and 23. Then 110 and 31. Then 115 and 42. Then 120 and 51. Then 125 and 57. Then 130 and 59. Okay. I didn't penalize you, but I'm telling you now, if you do it again, I'm going to penalize you. Please put in at least two of your coordinates when you draw it. That's one mark for two of them. Then you get a mark for, with that mark, I see that you are using the second interval or the second value of the interval. You get a mark for grounding it. Right? So that's one, one for a coordinate, one for sh using the second interval, and then one more for the shape of the graph, that it has the correct S shape. What's the estimate mean of the rugby player's weight? Okay, so this was, this one is always difficult to allocate marks to, because it's all work on your calculator, but it counts three marks. So what I did there, you can do it without the calculator as well. Then you get uh, the midpoint there, it's 87,5 times the frequency is 4. 92,5 times 6, 97,5 times 6, 102,5 times 10, no, times 7. 107,5 times, no, yo, did I skip that? 107,5 times 8. 112,5 times 11, 117,5 times 9, 122,5 times 6, 127,5 times 2. You understand that? You add all of them and you divide it by the number of values. Now, the number of values that we had here was not, uh, 59. 59 values. Was it 59? Eh? No. Okay, so divide by that. But the easiest way is to do it on your calculators. I lent my calculator to a grade 12 learner, but if we have time before the end of the period, I will borrow one of your calculators and I'll just show you with the frequency again. You must, it's the same as the others, you just go and switch on the frequency before you start. Okay, determine how many players has a weight of 22, of between 100 and 122 kilograms. So there is the 100. You look at the kilogram. Ne? So there's 100. It's going to be 16. Then you go to 122. And that gives you around about 54. Do you understand that? All of you? Okay. So, the answer there, you're just going to say 54 minus 16, and that gives you an answer of 38. No. Yeah. Now, I give you the marks for more or less 38, so just make sure that I marked it correct there if you were in in line with the answer. And that one counted three marks. Make sure I gave you all the marks there. Okay, last question. How many learners wrote the test? It's that reading you take there. It's 80. What is the minimum mark that the learner could have scored if they performed in and above the 90th percentile? So there are 60 learners. Now what you're going to do is 
percentile, I told you, you do not add 1. Do you remember that? So we just say 60 times 90, that gives me 54. Okay, 54. So you go to 54, and then you take the reading. What did I do? 80. Typing in 60, sorry. 72. So then you go from 72 up into the Ogive and you take the reading and that gives you about 46, 45, round about there. Okay. But very few of you got that one right. Very few. Do you understand the answer? Do you understand how I did it? Do you? Sure. Okay. If I'd asked the question, how many scored above, um, or what was the minimum mark that they scored if it was above the 30th percentile, then you would take your calculator, you say there are 80 people times 30%, that gives you 24, then you go to the number 24, and you take the reading there. Then it would be like, between 20 and 22, so it's 21. Okay. Use the graph to determine the estimate median. So with the median, you're going to say 80 plus 1. Okay. okay. And then times with a half. That gives you 40 and a half. You all understand? So you go to 40 and a half, that's like just above 40. And you go and take that reading, and that gives you round about 28. Twenty-eight. Do you all understand that? Sure. Are those marks a true reflection? Hmm? I hope not. Okay, I'm just going to... Oh. Uh, can I quickly borrow a Casio? Then I can show you just quickly how to switch on the frequency before we um, before I switch off the video. Thank you so much. Always before you start, even if it's clear, you clear it all. Ne? Okay. So we say mode, stat, two, and then you put, put the lines. Then it will only be one column. You see that? Okay. If you say... Shift set up. Shift set up. And you go down to one down, then you go to stat, then they ask oh you can't see that. Sorry. Let me clear it again. Shift clear three oh. Okay. If you don't want two columns, you just say uh, mode stat variants, then it gives you your one table. Put in your values, equal to, equal to, equal to, equal to, and then we'll go to the other part now. If you want the frequency, in other words, you want two columns, that's where you choose the midpoint and you choose the frequency, or you put in the frequency. You're first going to say you change the setup. You see the setup there. Okay, so it's shift, setup, then there's nothing about statistics on that screen now. Then you press down. Then number three has stat. You choose that one, and it asks frequency on or off. You say on. Okay. Now if you do the same thing, mode, stat, number one, you've got your two columns. Okay. So getting the columns is mode, stat, for VAR. Getting one or two columns would depend on whether you put the frequency on before you start. Okay. Then calculating it has to do with this stat button there. So you're going to say shift, stat, VAR, and then you've got N, the mean, the standard deviation, and that number four we don't use. Easy, but it's stuff that you must learn. Okay. Alright, so then it's on the video as well. I can switch off here. You can, guys can have a look at it again before the exams.